bless you. We give you praise. All the honor belongs to you, Father. We thank you. We are on once more. Today, Wednesday, the 9th of September. Thank God for all our viewers. You are all welcome. We are happy to have you on for another session. Just stay on with us and be blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give God praise. I want to just thank God for everyone who is watching today, who is going to be part of this message. That the word of God coming will make, make, make meaning in your life and touch people that need to be touched. Bring healing to those that need healing. Touch those lives that need to be touched, those answers that need to be answered. Pray for the sweet, precious Holy Spirit to minister to us through his word today that will be blessed. And that person that is weeping and looking for answers, that the Lord God Almighty will touch that one. The Spirit of the living God begins to manifest in every area, every country where people are watching from. We pray, O oh Lord, that the Spirit goes all out to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, sweet, precious Holy Spirit. Take over my spirit, man, as I minister the word to your people. Use me as a vessel. Use me as that microphone. Use me, O oh Lord, to reach out to your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you all. Today's topic is thank God for Penina. Penina. We give God praise for our Penina. Penina in our lives. We thank God for Penina. Penina might look like a kind of problem. Might look like a wrong setting in life. But it's a good thing to have Penina in your life. It's a very good thing to have Penina. If you don't have Penina, you might not even get to where God has ordained you to be. Penina has helped us to fulfill destinies. And on that note, we are going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 1. And it's a long passage, but we're going to read through. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 18. 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 1 to verse 18. Say so now there was a certain man of Ramatha Zophim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephratite. And he had two wives, only one wife is a problem. Then you have it two or four or five. Sorry for men that have ten wives. <laughs> it is well. And he had two. This man had two. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. And the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children. But Hannah had no children. Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of the city. Out of his city yearly to worship. And to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was, was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But to Anna, Hannah, he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Hmm. When it is from the Lord. And her adversary also provoked her soul for to make her, her fret because the Lord had shut her womb. And he, and as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, she, so, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Akana to his, her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better than to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. And now El Eli, the, prof the priest, sat upon a seat by the post of the temple, temple of the Lord. 
and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. 11. And she vowed a vow and said, oh, uh, said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man child, that I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued to pray before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now, Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaints and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked him of him. And she said, Let thy hand handmaid find grace in, in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Her countenance was no more sad. The bitterness of heart had changed to joy because she needed her joy to be in place for that miracle to be fulfilled. The word of God says she, she went. She was no more sad. The enemy has so provoked her. Penina. Penina. Penina could be anything in our life that caused us stress, caused us pain, trouble. That you don't even feel like waking up from bed in the morning when you think of Penina. Penina was a thorn in the flesh of Hannah. She was a troublemaker. Imagine someone who cannot have children. That's one thing you cannot give yourself. Women, we understand. We understand. It's a place to be in life. Where you cannot give this child to yourself and it's like, it, it should come from God. And now it is God who has shut the womb. Ah, who else can give? Nobody else except God. This man had two wives. I believe Hannah was the first wife. She was the oldest and because of the fact that she, couldn't, she could not conceive, that was why the husband had to go in. And she was, she was, they had been married for about 10 years. And this 10 years was a long period of time. And according to the Jewish law, after that 10 years, when the child is not coming, the man is free to go and take another wife. For that other wife. I don't know what has caused you to like miss what, what should be for you. And it's like, it, it has now entered another level. It has now entered another level of hostility, another level of pain. Maybe you have served that this exam for so many years. Keep writing and keep failing. That is a penina trying to pass this one exam but yet you have gone so many times and yet always it turns out a failure that is a penina Anna had to endure that penina she had to endure this penina for so many years imagine going out to the church what you be thinking, if only Penina will not go with us. But Penina must go because she's part of the family. We have Peninas in our families. Peninas could be family members, close relations. You cannot do without them. She just could not do without Penina. She had to be on that team. Penina was on the team. Maybe you met somebody in life. Hey, thought I was the right man to marry. And in the end, it turned out to be something else. Has a penina. And till, 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 till date, the person is still a ton in your flesh. Has a penina. Oh. Maybe it's, it's a friend that came on. A relation that came on. And you, this one, this person just has to be part of your life. You have done everything you can. Just try to avoid this. But yeah, they cannot be avoided. 
it's a penina. But we are saying thank God for those peninas in our lives. If not for that penina, we wouldn't know how to pray. Penina so provoked Hannah. Provoked Hannah so much that Hannah had to go to the prayer altar with this heart of, heart of pain. You know when you pray prayer out of pain, things happen. When a woman goes to the prayer altar with that heart of pain, with that bitter, with that pain inside, something happens. But unless, until Hannah was provoked, she didn't go in that mood to the prayer altar. I guess she was still praying like, of course, the word of God says, and the husband loved her. The husband loved Hannah so much that Hannah didn't need to, you know, to move to that. He was, he was like kind of consoled. But man cannot fit in the place of God. He was the one consoling. Hannah, don't worry because well, I love you. And I want to believe because of that love that the husband loved her. That was what was causing, that was what was causing Penina to do what he was doing to her. Because of the love of the husband. The man loved her too much. And because of that, the, 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 the second wife was angry. She wasn't happy. She wasn't happy with what was happening in the home. And because of that jealousy, because of that jealousy, she had to keep provoking Anna. Keep provoking Hannah. Keep provoking her. Until it was too much. They'll be giving to children. And yet, even though the husband will give her a double portion. But yet, it wasn't enough to fill in the gap for children, for a child. Everyone wants to carry her own baby. Everyone wants to carry her own child because your own is your own. I pray for someone who is going through any kind of I will, childlessness in the name of I pray for you, for, for, for you to receive the fruit of the womb in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing to that womb in the name of Jesus. I speak life to that womb in the name of Jesus. I speak life to that womb. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life in the name of Jesus. I command that womb come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a painful place to be. It's a painful place to be when you cannot have and someone who, who has is mocking you. Maybe it's a condition that is pushing you to commit suicide. Take it easy yet. God has not finished with you yet. It's not yet over. <laughs> God has plans. He has, he has great plans for everyone. And until you see what God is doing, until you see what God is doing, you might think Penina is winning. But Penina always loses. They don't win. Peninas don't win. Penina is always being cut out of your life. They will try, but they will not win. Penina will not win. Penina will not win. So don't look at the penina and decide to take your life. Don't look at the penina and decide to stop on the way. Penina cannot take, take, take what belongs to you. It is only God that has it. Penina is only there to help you reach to the prayer altar. Penina will help you to know how to pray, to fulfill your destiny. Thank God for penina. Thank God for penina. Our enemies do well for us more than our friends do. It is your enemy who will push you to pray because if that enemy is not there, you will know how to pray. You will know how to pray. You will know how to go to the prayer altar. These two wives, one is Penina, one is Anna. Their names are significant. Let's look at the meaning of their names and see. The meaning of Hannah. Hannah means grace, favor from God, loved by God. And you know what grace means? Unmerited favor. Favor that you, you don't, you, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you are not qualified for, but yet God has given it to you. Anna. Unmerited favor. Loved by God. Loved by God. Cherished by God. The ability of God. I mean, you are being held by God that you, you are not even, you cannot just do evil. Anna. Hannah, a woman of prayer, a woman that loved God, but yet, the word of God says God shot her womb. Why was the womb shot? Why is that thing not coming? You've been praying over it for so long and it's yet it's not coming. She had many issues going on in her life. But it not tormented her. She was a thorn in the flesh of Hannah. She never rested day and night. That even Anna, Hannah could not eat. Ah. There are some troubles that will come and it's like it's just constant. You, you, you become a what? 
a, 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 a prayer warrior by force. When you just want to be separated, you just want to stay on your just you, you just want to seek the face of God. Can I just say, 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 say here and pray? You don't want to eat and no more celebration. Have you been in that condition before? It's a place to be. But you, you, when you get to that place, things change. Change, change comes to that situation. Answers come. The penina has pushed you so much. Maybe it's that boss in the office. Or one wicked stepmother. Or one father who is so, 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 so cruel. That penina could be anything. But I want you to use that penina as a stepping stone. Move closer to God. Penina, penina should drive you closer to your father, to your maker. Hannah was a, mo- a, 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 a mother of a model who, who, who made a vow to God and she fulfilled it. An upright woman. No wonder the husband loved her. But here there was a bat. I don't know that bat you are going through. I don't know which bat is in your life. That bat, that point, that bat. She is good, but it's a penina. It's a penina. And when you go to God in that prayer place, when you go to God on your knees, penina will disappear. Penina will be swallowed up. Is it a sickness that is tormenting you? The pain is constant, I mean, going on constantly, unabated. It's a penina. And when you pray to God, you go to God at that prayer altar, God will show forth. Peninas, they only come to help you fulfill destiny. They only come to help you reach your mark. Peninas help you to get to where God has ordained you to be. Thank God for Peninas. The Peninas push you, push you, push you closer to your, to your place, to your high place in life, your, well, your, your, your wealthy place. Penina could be lack of finances, lack, constant lack. But as you go to God to ask God for answers, He will show you the way out. You seek His face. He said, "They that seek Him diligently will find Him." It should be a diligent, diligent search. Penina will push you. It's too much now that they are mocking you. Ah, you want to hide? You cannot just surface in public. You are, you are scared. You don't want to talk to people. You want to take cover. People are coming, you are covering up. You just want to bow down your head. You cannot even raise your head anymore because of Penina. Oh, I see that condition changing in the name of Jesus. I see that condition changing in the name of Jesus. Let's look at the, the, the definition also of Penina. What is the meaning of this name? Penina. It means spell, it means beauty. Eh? It also means what? Venomous coral. Venom. That's why she was coming out, thinking her, 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 her rival. She was just giving her every money she would throw it. You know when you have a venomous snake, you have scorpion that is stinging. You have this thing that is causing pain, hurting. Coral reef, fire coral. And yeah, it's, it's, it's so hard that even in the sea, when you get hurt by this thing, it's difficult for the wound to heal. That's the meaning of her name. She was just living up to her name. So you could see the two, the two people in the home there. One is on the other side, the other one is on the other side. But yet they had to stay together. That is how life goes. You might have oppositions in life, but that, 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 that doesn't mean that that's the end of life. Fight through. Be strong. Overcome. Have the mindset of an overcomer. Have the mindset of a winner. You must get to the top. Penina notwithstanding. The enemy notwithstanding. She bought 10 children. 12, 12, 12 children are, 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 as a matter of fact. She was hateful. She was an enemy. She was a resentful woman. Nothing good to write home about. She wasn't friendly. Just enter this home, enter this marriage, and she's causing trouble all over the place. The peaceful home before. But because of the womb, something else had to come in. As a woman, no woman wants to have a rival in life. No. Women will already want to have our place. So then you're not come and have four, you're not come and have three. It's not an easy place to be. It's a polygamous home. It's not a place to stay. Chaotic situation. This other one wants to kill the neighbor's children. The other one, that is what happens. It's not a place to, place to stay. I don't know how, how, how men go through this. Going to marry four, four women. 
life. Some go up to the ten. How? One, one. Look at Solomon. What he went through. No wonder. Solomon now was just confused. He had to now start worshiping other gods. Did he make the money? It, it's, it's not easy to marry many wives. One woman in the house. <laughs> that one is just. <laughs> It's enough. Hold on to that one. I won't say much. Just when you have one, stay with that. Hold that one wife. She's a blessing. <laughs> now he had to. But many at times I don't think I don't think uh, Elkanah was trying to, to rebuke Pen- Penina because what he was trying to do there was to console Hannah. He was there. Let, let me just heal it. I guess that, that Penina was a very troublesome woman. Very troublesome. You know, there are some of these women, they come in and it's like warfare. She was troublesome. So the man could not even stand her. So what he had to do, he knew Hannah was a wise woman. So I think she was also older than the other one because, you know, little children, when they come into your home, they try to play. They play and play all manner. So because this woman was a wise woman, a woman I think she, she was operating in wisdom and she was a prayer woman. So all this time that this lady was doing this, the word of God says she was not replying. She was weeping. She will only cry. And this one will not stop. Penina will not stop. Penina, they don't stop. They don't give up. Peninas don't give up in, 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 in what they are doing. Peninas keep on because their mission is to help you accomplish your, your aim. Peninas don't stop on the way. Peninas don't stop. They, 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 they don't take no for answer. They don't rest. That enemy in your life tormenting you does not rest. So you too don't rest. Day and night, when you think you are going to sleep, they are waking up to see what evil they can do next. These are peninas. But thank God for peninas. Thank God for that negative situation that has pushed you. That is why you were able to achieve that aim. Because let me prove to them that my God is real. They are now asking you questions. I thought you said you are serving God. How come this? How come you are not yet married until this time? But God is saying it is for a time and a season. You are going to get married. You are going to have children. You are going to be settled in at your home. And Penina will be ashamed in the name of Jesus. Because always the end of Penina is shame. Penina has always go through shame. Their end is shame and disgrace. And the Hannahs will take the glory. Because God's, God's hand is in there. It is for the name of the Lord to be magnified. It is for the glory of God to be seen. He shot the womb himself. To do what he alone can do. And as Hannah started having her own children, that was how. And when Hannah had one, Penina would bury two. When she conceived one, in the end, every other child went. She had to now go back to Hannah to ask Hannah, pray for me, please. Pray for me. So Hannah had to pray for her. Penina will always come back to ask you for prayers. They will always come back to ask you for mercy. Oh, yes. So don't worry about Peninas. Be strong enough to fight through. Don't let them take you out. Don't let them allow you to commit suicide. Don't let them allow you to stop on the way. Don't let Penina stop you. Use Penina as a stepping stone to get to the top. Oppositions in life, hindrances in life, warfares, people that hate you. Some will even you stay with some people, they don't even want to send you to school. Thinking, oh, this one's my and their children are going. Their children are going to school. You, you are in the house. But God is going to give you divine speed. Oh, they thought they have arrived. They thought they are ahead of you. But when it's about God, be rest assured, he will give you acceleration. You will get there before them. You will reach there before them. You will get to the top and they will be like, ah, so that the name of the Lord can be glorified. That is what God does. Hallelujah. Penina. Now look at El- Elkanah, the husband. What was he trying to do? He was trying to console. He said, am I not better? Eh? He said, am I not better than what? Ten sons to you? So it's like this woman has ten sons. But look at me now. I'm even more than the ten sons. So consider me. Consider me your husband. Don't look at it. But what did she want? She wanted her own. It's not about him. He couldn't fill that, fill in that gap. No human being can fill in the gap that God alone can fill, fill in. Human beings can do their best for you. But God... God is the only one that can. So, in the end, with, 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 with all these things you are going through, who are you turning to? Not turn to the Lord. Who are you going after? Are you going after native doctors? Are you going after witch doctors? Are you going after false prophets? Are you going after 
people who just sell you in bits, go to the Lord. That's the best place to go. He knows all about you. He has the solution. Turn to the Lord. Seek his face. He will answer you. The Lord will not leave you unattended to. He said, call upon me and I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things. No one that calls on him is neglected. Turn to him. When Hannah went there, she went to the Lord on her knees. In that tears, in that pain, God answered her. Elkanah tried. Elkanah tried to console her, but it couldn't work. It couldn't work. Only God to do it. Only God to, could, could, could handle that situation because he closed it. If God is the one that closed it, he knows how to open it. He has set time. Why would God close the womb? Some will say, isn't God, isn't, isn't, isn't God good? He's a good God. But why did he close the womb? Huh. When you are chosen by God, when the hand of God is on you, your case is extraordinary. God had a special plan for, 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 for Hannah. He had a special plan. Maybe you are sitting somewhere like, why is, it, why, is it, why is my life going this way? You need to understand who you are. Get to find out who am I. If you get to know who you are, you continue running after God. Because those people he has chosen, he said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man. Those things that God has prepared for them that love him. Are you the one that God loves? Are you the one that loves God? You have a special package. You have a special package. Look at who came out of Hannah. The man of God, Samuel, whose word never fell to the ground. His word never fell to the ground. A renowned prophet of God. Who stood for the right. Take in the old one, bring in the new one. He's the one to initiate new government. A great man of God. That was the man. Because of, because of Samuel. Because of Samuel, there was a pause there. Because of Isaac, there was a pause there. Those children, when they are coming, the mother has to be prepared. And it's not any kind of woman that can give birth to such. God, God chooses certain women to bring birth to certain people. Oh, yes. Because with these people, they carry great destiny. So you should be able to carry them through. That mother should be able to carry them through that destiny. She should be a prayerful woman. Penina couldn't have given birth to Samuel. No. Penina has not given birth to Samuel. It is only Hannah that gives birth to Samuel. It is only Hannah. If you are Hannah, <laughs> relax in the Lord. That baby will come. That baby will come. That child will come. And you need to be sensitive. Look at Hannah. She went there. She asked God. She said, she said, give me a male child. She was specific. Give me a male child. And when you give me that male child, I will give him back to you to serve you. Because she had understood, she had understood spiritually, this child is for a purpose. You don't need to own the child and hold the child and hold them tight. No, I will not. Allow them. These children are for, for the Lord. You prayed and God gave you children. You prayed and God gave you children. Now, you don't want them to go to church anymore. You don't want them to serve the Lord anymore. They have not become your own. Let God have control over those children. Let God have access to those children. Let him have as a God. She loaned him. She took him as soon as she gave birth because she told God, Father, this is what I'm going to do. Have you made a vow to God and you have not fulfilled it? Do it. Uh, Hannah fulfilled her vow. She made sure as soon as she gave birth to the child, she said, even though she had cried for this child for so long, she had prayed, she had gone through pain for this child. Yet when the child came, because of what she told the Lord, because she has made her vow. Maybe you told God, Father, when you give me this job, I will give you this amount of money. I will pay this amount of and now the job has done they have paid you the salary and the salary is looking so big in your eyes now you cannot pay you forgot the vow you made remember he said for you shall remember the lord your god for it is he that gives you power to get wealth the penny that tormented you penny of poverty tormented you so much and you told god father i will give you this i'll do this and do this some people vow big when the father when you bless me i will do this if you have not done it today i'm telling you go and honor it Go and honor that vow. Go and honor the vow. It is very important. Because when you honor that vow, 
that job you have gotten will be sustained. Hannah had to honor the vow she made to God. And God did what? God gave her. Whatsoever you give to God multiplies. She gave the son and then she got multiplication of children. She had what? Five children. Five children. That even in the end, when Penina had to come and beg her because now her children were, were dying one after the other. Because of the pain she caused Hannah. When you see spiritual people, don't joke with them. This woman is a praying woman. And she caused that woman so much pain. And now God was now punishing her for what she did. And as Hannah brought one, two who go. She now notices the fifth child was coming. She said, ah, if I don't go back to Hannah and beg her, this one, these two also will go because it was two by two. She had to go to Hannah. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Pray for me. And thank God for Hannah. She had good heart. She prayed for her. And now, God said, because you have prayed, okay. Name this children by your name. She now added the children. So in the end, when Hannah was singing her song, she sang the song. She said, the woman who was buying her was what? Seven. But biologically, her own children that came out of her were five. But now, because of Penina's own children that came to her, to her, the two sons added to her, made them seven. Hannah will always win. Can you be a Hannah in life? The Peninas always loses. They always come back bowing on their knees. I don't know, maybe they are, they are, they are, provoking, they are, they are, they are provoking you in that house. Maybe you don't have money to even feed your children. You don't have money to give your children the best of education. And you have some, some friends or some relatives that are there with you. And it's like their own is going well. And they have mocked you. They, are keep, they keep mocking you. That mockery is for a season. God is going to lift you up. He's going to lift you up and they will see and know that God is real. God is real. So when we say thank God for them, thank God for Penina. When they come to you for forgiveness, forgive them. When Penina comes back for forgiveness, forgive Penina. Because in the end, Penina will always come bowing down. Thank God for the Penina. But the Penina comes to make you stronger. Stop weeping. Stop crying. Rise up in that strength of the Lord. He said, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. If not for so, if not for Saul, David wouldn't have known how to draw more, more closer to God. He used to be closer, but because of the, the way Saul was pursuing him, he had to go more closer, go more deeper. He didn't stay on the surface. He had to go deeper into God. That's how he entered the throne. Thank God for Peninas. I don't know which one is your own Penina. But I'm saying to you this day, be grateful for that Penina. Maybe you have been weeping and thinking this Penina, you have been praying, oh Lord God, let this Penina die. And you pray and pray, but the penina is not dying. God has not decided to take the penina because God wants that penina to fulfill that thing for you. You have not prayed enough yet. You have not gotten to the place where you have to pray for you to enter that your promised land. So penina is still alive. Penina is still seeing, seeing you. Penina, penina is been watching you where you are. Come and spy you small and go. <laughs> then it start manifesting. Then God will not tell you, begin to pray. You take this seven days fast. If not for penina, you wouldn't know how to take seven days dry without food and water. Every food that comes, you will eat it. Every celebration you are inside, you have not made, made out time to seek the face of the Lord. But when Penina started pursuing you, you knew how to fast. Thank God for Penina. And because of that fasting, you have been able to excel to get to another level. We give God glory for Peninas. It's not a mistake that they came. It's good they came. You are, you are asking, why was I born into this family? It's not by mistake. Thank God you were born there. Why is this man? You wake up and you see one father, you see one say, Why is it? I mean, how come this? You mean this one is my father too? I mean, God, why? God knows everything. He doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't make mistakes. Some people have some abusive fathers who really molested them in some other ways also. But yet it didn't stop them. It pushed them to get to the top. It taught them how to pray. Many great, great people. I was, I was listening to one great, one great man. In, in America, that he was talking about his father. But thank God for the mother who knew how to pray. He spoke so much about, about the father and that the father was nothing to write home about. But yet, the mother knew how to pray. And he was like thinking, why is this woman still living with this man? Because he knew the father was tormenting the mother so much. He was expecting the mother to live. But she, the mother knew that that was her penina in life and through that penina she would excel. And they, she had all her children by, 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 by the, this man. And the pain in, in the heart of the, 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 the young man, you know, at the time he had to forgive his father. When he now forgave his father, things started opening up for him. We always have to forgive our Peninas. In the end, you must forgive them. Because God programmed them to be there. They were programmed to be there. We have to forgive them. I don't know which, 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 which one has been your own. Maybe it has been... 
<laughs> a bad brother or a bad sister or maybe somehow somebody went into witchcraft in the family and all of a sudden everything started going haywire we pray for the mercy of God upon their life we, we forgive them they caused us some pain yes they did but yet we let it go so that you can, you can, you can enter your high place unforgiveness is a hindrance the, that unforgiveness, that, that picture can hit that. If Hannah did not get it, her cousin was no monster. If she did not, she did not get into that place of joy, she wouldn't have given birth to that child. Many things would have happened on the labor, on, in the labor world. But say her countenance was no more sad. She rejoiced. She forgot about Penina. Because in the end, Penina will come and bow. She rejoiced in the Lord. Because she got the answer. And when you pray, you pray, you pray, you know that you have one, you feel it that you have gotten the answer. She knew she had gotten the answer. How did she know she was going to give birth to a male child? The spirit confirmed. The spirit of God confirmed her. So she knew that this is a male child. And the father, you give me, I give him to you. So she had already dedicated the child already to God. We want to forgive our peninas. Maybe you are still holding on to them. They cause you so much pain. The penina cause you so much pain that when you think about it, maybe you see them. You have even seen some of them on Facebook. You see them. It's like, no, this one cannot even talk, say hello to this one. Forgive. Let it go. Let it go. Maybe poverty, poverty is so threatening. I mean, it dealt with you well. That you know, you know the different, different, different names of everything. You were there <laughs> in that place where you couldn't cook. You couldn't even buy fish to put in your pot. Let alone drink tea with milk. It has cost you now. You cannot even use tea to milk to drink tea. Now it has just you kept drinking this, this black tea. Black tea, no sugar, no milk. Only that one you were drinking. It has now stuck on you. It is well. Let it go. Things happen in life. And all this happening is a script. It's written or it's ordained already. You think God didn't know that Hannah would bear, bear uh, Samuel? God knew. She was the one prepared for that task. So you need to know who you are. That's the main thing. If you get to understand who you are, <laughs> you will not fight some people. There are some people you just leave them. Just get to know who you are. You need to ask God, Father, show me me. Let me know who I am. Once you get to know yourself, because some people only are talking, you mind them, you just keep your focus. Focus on God. Keep moving forward. Don't let them stop you. These are peninas. 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 At the time, the man of God was even thinking she was drunk, but she wasn't drunk. You know she was drunk, but she was really drunk in the spirit. Drunk with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. You know the Holy Ghost is like wine. He's drunk with the Holy Ghost. That's why she could enter that realm to go there and touch the heart of God. She wasn't on the surface anymore. They sat on that table and the woman provoked her so much she couldn't even eat food. Nothing food couldn't go down. Sometimes, you know, the process like, water cannot even go down. Common water cannot go down. Water couldn't be swallowed. But yet, so she didn't touch, she didn't eat, and she stood from that table and went to the altar. She said, There should be a way out. There is always a way out. And that way out is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The way, the solution is Jesus. Jesus is the solution, Christ is the answer. If you have not made him your Lord and personal Savior, and you want to team up with him today, you want to make him your father, that would be a good decision to make today. Because he's the Prince of Peace. He comes to give you healing. He comes to take away that pain. He comes to give you answers. He is the solution. Stop crying. The, the word of God says the woman wept so much. She wept. She kept weeping. Her food was tears. Her food was tears. Only crying. Every day she will cry. <laughs> we went through some situations in life. And sometimes I would tell my mom, I'm, I'm like, Mom, eh, there was this church bell. We always used to go sit under the church bell. I said, if that church bell could speak, this church bell will be telling people the testimony of the God. That's why we go and sit down. Because the torment was so much. But today the story has changed. Oh, we have had peninas in life. But thank God for the peninas. Today the story has changed. When God got ready, he was just elevating. I mean, blessing people everywhere. And today when you look back at that time, you'll be thinking, is it me? You know, just imagine you didn't have anybody around. All of a sudden you get to Europe. You'll be asking, how did I get here? No way forward, no way backward. It's like, but God just did it. He just did. He just elevated who? Open doors. Brought people into, into our lives. That it's like, where were they all this time? We're going through this torment. We went through torment. Oh, 
My mother went through it. My father died. My, my mother suffered. She went through it. She was a, a woman. I, mean, I, I I know what this Hannah went through. She was my mom was like one stick. You could put water in here and to settle. I, when I remember that picture, and I look back, I say, thank God for this woman. Because of that, we kept praying. She, that's the reason why I'm seated here today, because of my mother. She was a prayer. She taught us how to pray. One brother came and said, you both have to pray. This condition can change. Do you want to enjoy in the future? And, and, and so on and so on, we'll enjoy in the future. And it has happened. The, the enjoyment has come. Oh, yes. My mom is in Europe today. I mean, she's enjoying her, her life. She, she, she has suffered. Let nobody envy this woman. She went through it. And taught her children how to pray. So we learned praying. We learned when any situation comes our way, we pray. She will tell you pray because there's power in prayers. There's power at the praying altar. I don't care what is tormenting you, what is fighting you. God has the solution. The solution is in the hands of God. Today, we are enjoying it. We are taking God because we are able to stand and pray. Some of us didn't even know we are going to finish school. But we finish. Ah, when we start saying it now, it's a testimony. It's a big testimony. There are people that people that, that knew us and knew. They are watching me here online. They know what I'm saying is true. But in the end, we give God all the glory. I don't know what you are going through. You want to give up? Please don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. It's not over yet. That penina came to elevate you. That penina came to put you into where you belong. The penina came to make you stronger because when you get fed up and you meet some enemies, if not for that penina, you won't be able to conquer those enemies ahead of you. Because in life, life is a, 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 a place where we go through ups, we go through downs, and it's like there are many things keep coming your way. Just like you, you learn mathematics in school, it says solve this problem. That is how life is. We keep solving problems. And when you solve one, you are ex exalted. When you solve one, you climb to a higher height. Are you ready to move in? Hold on to Jesus. Because on your own, you cannot do it. No man can fill in that gap. And cannot try to see whether he could console his wife. He couldn't. Because it is not the, the, what man can do. It is not in the power of man. It's only in the, the hand of God. It is only God that can do. Nobody did for us. Only God. We saw God do. We saw God do it. We saw God do. Nobody did but God. If you don't hold on to the Lord God Almighty, you can't get there. If you have been the one who is like you are looking for friends to console you, they don't have the answer. They don't have the answer. If you are not careful, you run to that person. They will give you wrong advice. Married women, you have issues in your home and you run, run to somebody, run to a friend who will begin to... She will rather try to talk you out of that marriage to bring her friend in. So we should, we, the, the best person to talk to is God Almighty. He has the answers. Get on your knees. On our knees, we win battles. On our knees, we overcome peninas. On our knees, peninas come to succumb to us. Because the peninas must come and bow. If only you are willing to pray. If only you are willing to give that, so, that situation to God. If only you are ready to turn to the living God. She said, Father, I have come. Just like Hannah went to the prayer altar. She didn't fight the, the rival. Even though she was really provoked. She didn't, she didn't go there fight. There was no fight in the house. She turned to the Lord. She went into prayer. She went into her, 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 her fasting. All that time she wasn't eating, she was fasting, she was praying, she went to the Lord. What are you turning to? Are you fighting them physically? The weapons of our warfare is not carnal, for it is mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. What is that stronghold? That penina is a stronghold. Go through God and pull down that stronghold. Pull it down through God. Pull it down through God. By strength shall no man prevail. It is only the Spirit of God that is able to help you. Go to God. Go to God and you see yourself victorious. Are you there? And you feel like today you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Because he's the Prince of Peace. If you don't have Christ, you'll be confused. You'll be thinking of committing suicide. Please don't commit suicide. Just turn to Jesus today. Just, just, just receive him as your Lord and personal Savior today. He's ready to help you. He's an advocate. He's a comforter. He's a helper. He's the revealer of all truth. That thing you need to know. That step, because life is in stages and it's about faith. Every step in your life is faith. So he will take you from one level to the other. You can accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior today. Make that turn around. I don't know what decision you have decided to make today. Maybe you have already gotten your ropes ready to, to hang yourself. Please, put it, take it down. Take that rope down. 
Or maybe you have prepared that concussion to drink and said, today I'm going to end it. Please don't end it today. It's not over yet. The answer is in Christ. If only you can just say with me, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me all my wrongs. Have mercy on me. Thank you for your blood you shed on the cross of Calvary for me. Take me as your own. Today I denounce every evil and I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I love you, Lord. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. As you have made this confession, Jesus has come into your heart. He's your Lord. He will help you. He's going to visit you. He's going to give you a visitation and you will know that he's really God. You will know that he's Lord over your life. You know, he's into that situation. He has plans for you and bigger plans. He has bigger plans for you. Father, I thank you for their lives. I present them to you, O Lord Most High. As they have accepted you as their Lord and personal Savior, Father, visit them. Release your angels, release your Holy Spirit to minister to them, Lord. In every country they may be, Lord, minister to them, O Lord. They have come into your vineyard. Lord, reach out to them. Anyone that is hurting, let them be healing. That one that is like thinking is over. That one that's penin penina has tormented so much. Penina of sickness, penina of pain, penina of lack, penina of rivalry has tormented so much. Now that it's like, you no know, way, Father, they have come unto you. You say, them that are giving to you shall by no means cast them out. They have come, Lord. Receive them. And begin to walk in their lives. Begin to walk in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you have received, look for any Bible-believing church in your country when churches have opened. Because in some countries, the churches have opened. Look for any Bible-believing church and start attending where you'll be fed with the word of God. That will help you and sustain you to grow more bigger in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the peace of God rests upon you until you come your way again next week. Remain blessed and remain strong in the Lord. As we keep praying for you, you keep praying for us also. In Jesus' name, God bless you.